In fact, this is the first time since I entered this house that I have seen this house, both sides agree to the fact that this budget that was presented by the minister has virtually nothing to hold on to. I have heard someone say that it is very difficult or the fastest way to destroy a country is to take away their hope. And that is what exactly this budget has done to us as Daniel. I've been trying to hold on to something, at least a glimpse of hope, but it's been very evasive. Sometimes you read and you feel that, oh, okay, there's something in here, and then when you dive deeper into it, delve deeper into it, you realize that there's absolutely nothing. We were in this house against all this advice and admonishment from people on this side, and especially the local government from G, that it is important that the district assembly remain focused in enhancing their revenue mobilization. We stated clearly that it was not proper to allow GRA and other people to come into the scene to collect property rates. This advice was not given to. And today, the Minister of Finance stands before us or stood before us to tell us that indeed GRA has not lived up to expectation. One of the critical rationales of a, a political economy is to create governance capacity at the local level. Mr. Speaker, for this reason, more stakeholders, in fact, development partners, have invested so much in some institutions to ensure that the district assemblies have the capacity to be able to mobilize resources and revenue, to be able to be independent of the central government. But what do we find today? Instead of deeply decentralization, as the minister stated on page 111, paragraph 587, that they are deeply decentralization, it will interest you to know that Mr. Speaker, transfer of funds to district assembly is not just the mode of or the means of critical means of deeply decentralization.